Hey guys, hello everyone, and welcome to another video where I'm going to take some more questions, uh, which you guys have requested to check whether these are challengeable or not. And uh, all these, like both these questions, I'm going to take two questions, and both these questions looks like they are challengeable. Okay, I'm going to discuss about that in detail in this video. I've also discussed about, like, I have also made three more videos in which I have discussed other questions. In case if you have not watched them, please do watch them. The links will be there in the i button you can click and watch those videos this is part four of that okay so let's start with it the first question over here is question id 701149 and this question is from term symbol it says that the number of d and p terms that arise from uh, p3 electronic configuration of an atom respectively is the correct answer key or the the answer according to the key is uh, two and three which is option number uh, like two okay this is according to key okay whereas uh, if you solve this contuitively uh, if you will try to solve this of your own you will find that there is uh, like you will get option number two uh, sorry option number three which is two and two so you will get two d term and two p term that's based upon just if you fill three electrons in the electronic configuration now we can try that so you will in this case if you feel it like this you will get l is equals to 0 you will get s as the term and if you try to fill it like this okay of course here i am writing ml as uh, plus 1 0 and minus 1 okay so in this case if you fill it like this uh, you are going to have l is equals to 2 in this case and you will have term d and if you fill the electrons um, uh, yeah something like this okay in this case l will be equal to 1 and this is going to give you p term okay uh, so if you try to fill it uh, in this way you will find out that the term or the multiplicity over here is going to be 4s here you will get uh, 2d and 2p this is what you will see in most of the references which are given in most of these references you are going to get this as the answer okay and uh, I think also like this is going to be the right answer. But the thing is that there is no proper reference where it is mentioned that this number of P terms or this number of D terms are there. They have not clearly mentioned. But on the other hand, uh, I got a mail from, um, all right. So on the other hand, I got a mail from uh, Imtiaz Ahmed, okay. Uh, he has given me some references. He has provided some reference to me and uh, he has mentioned that in atkins the answer is given according to the key i will show you uh, because i have also the like i also have atkins for physical chemistry let's look upon that okay so this is your uh, atkins physical chemistry ninth edition uh, and uh, this is page number 358 chapter is uh, atomic structure and spectra in almost all the edition of atkins you have this this is in ninth edition and if you see this is example number 9.6 and this is basically they are taking a different approach to find out the number of terms which arise from a given uh, like uh, electronic configuration and they are using this uh, Klebsch Gordon uh, series and uh, you can read about it okay uh, like it is in Shivers uh, sorry it's in Atkins physical chemistry ninth edition okay uh, yeah if you want PDF of this you can just simply write down Atkins physical chemistry 9th edition PDF and you will get it on Google you won't be having any trouble in downloading it okay because of copyright issues I can't share that on YouTube so fine let's come to the question now you can see here the question is clearly like very similar to what is asked in exam it says find the terms that can arise from the configuration there are two part of the question uh, one is uh, D2 and the other one is uh, P3 okay so they have mentioned that you are using Klebsch Gordon series and begin with finding. So you can read about it if you want. I am more interested to look upon this. So second or B part, which says that coupling two electron gives a minimum value of L, uh, which, which is zero. Therefore, the L dash which they are calculating is two, one, and zero, and they are coupling it with L three. So you have to read this Klebsch Gordon method how they are using it. But basically, what they have come up with is that overall result they have come up with these L values. Okay. And uh, they are telling that giving 1f, 2d and 3p and 1s term. So you can see that uh, for p3 configuration, for p3 electronic configuration, they are getting actually 2d and 3p configuration. 
विच इज वॉट इज मैंशनड इन द आंसर की तो टू डी एंड थ्री पी सो इट लुक्स लाइक द आंसर की अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस इज राइट बट सो दैट दैट मेक्स दैट दैट मेक्स मी फील दैट इफ समबडी चैलेंजेस दिस क्वेश्चन आई डोंट नो वेदर इट विल बी एक्सेप्टेड और नॉट but if still if you want to challenge this question because i forgot i think it's a two marker question so still if you want to challenge this question you can challenge if you have a solid reference where it is mentioned that you have two s uh, sorry 2d and 2p uh, like terms that are going to arise uh, if you have that then go ahead and challenge it do let me know in the comment if you have any such reference directly uh, and like i'll try to pin that comment so that others can also read okay so this was about this particular question so it's in again in a gray region it's i i cannot say certainly that whether this this should be challenged or not but the next question is certainly has to be challenged okay so this question here it says that a particle confined in 1d box uh, between x is equals to 0 and l is perturbed by a constant potential v on the left half of the box where x is equals to 0 to x is equals to l by 2 Zero to l by two uh, by v by three on the right side, which is x is equals to l by two to x is equals to l. Um, okay, with v in this region and with v by three in this region, the first order perturbation correction to the ground state energy is how much? So the answer given to the key is this. Okay, this is the answer mentioned in the in the key. Okay, but if you solve this, if you solve this question, just if you know quantum chemistry and if you have solved certain similar questions, so I will try to do it. So basically, what are the things given to us that we have potential is equals to v for when the x is in between of zero to l by two, and uh, like this is equals to v by three, okay, for uh, when it is in between of l by two. to l okay and you know that wave function psi is equals to under root 2 by l and sin because it's for the ground state right they have said it for the ground state so n value will be 1 so um sin pi x by l right this is what we will have and of course psi star is also going to be same psi star will remain same so uh, we have to first do it in both the regions separately you know that in order to do first order energy correction for the energy first order energy correction of the ground state is basically from 0 to l and you have psi star um vx psi dx okay this is what you have and because it's divided into two regions so you will be doing it in two parts okay So this will go from a zero to l by two, okay, and then you have psi star v x psi d x, and plus then you have from l by two to l uh, psi star v x psi d x. Okay, this is what you have. You can substitute the values, or you can basically solve them separately. So I'm leaving it here. I'm going to solve them separately now. so if you do this basically this is the point or this is the step which is important because after solving these two separately we are going to substitute their values okay so when you are going to solve let's say first part which is 0 to l by 2 and psi star let's let me put let us call this as i1 and let us call this as i2 okay so i'm solving first part of integration i1 and this is uh, psi star is basically 2 by l sin pi x by l and v x is v here and then you have again psi is also 2 by l and sin pi x by l dx okay this is going to give you 0 to l by 2 and this will become 2 by l because under root under root is going to be cancelled out and you will have sin square pi x upon l and then you have v dx okay vx dx or v dx now you can use identity if you want you can also use uh, shortcut trick okay but i am not going to use shortcut trick i am going to do it basically how we so that it becomes more explained in a more explained way if you want to re, uh, like challenge this question you should know it step by step so you have sin square 1 minus 
cos a x sorry cos 2 a cos 2 a divided by 2 okay this is the identity okay using this identity so this sine square theta you can use this value here so the integration i1 is going to become here this 2 l 2 by l and v are not dependent upon x so they can be taken outside so i have uh, 2 l upon uh, sorry 2 v upon l right and integration from 0 to l by 2 and in the place of this sine square this i am substituting it as 1 minus cos and because it is 2 so it becomes cos 2 pi x upon l and this whole thing divided by 2 now you can simply cancel out this 2 and this 2 okay and then your i1 is going to be v upon l and this is going to become two integrations one will be 0 to l by 2 and dx okay this dx multiplied by 1 dx and minus 0 to l by 2 and then you have cos 2 pi x upon l dx okay so i1 if you solve this so v by l will remain like that only this is going to become x and you know if you substitute the value of x so it will be basically l by 2 okay i'm just skipping one step here minus if you use this you know that uh, cos theta is going to convert into sin theta and uh, this is going to be um, yeah so you are going to have sin pi x upon l and whatever is multiplication of that that will come in the division it will become um, 2 pi upon l okay yeah this is what you will have and this should have limits from 0 to l by 2 okay if you solve this part basically if you put upper limit that will be l by 2 this 2 this 2 will cancel out sin pi will become 0 so this part this section of integration is going to become 0 okay this will be equal to 0 and then your i1 is going to be equal to v upon l okay v upon l and into l upon 2 this l by 2 will be remaining l and l will get cancelled out so the value of i1 is going to be v upon 2 okay so the value of i1 you have got it is v upon 2 now next thing is to calculate i2 so if you do in the same way i2 if you are going to do in the same way everything is going to remain same because all these things are same the only difference is the value of v is v by 3 okay so instead of if you try to solve it instead of a v which will come up over here you will also have 3 in denominator here okay you will have v by 3 instead of v you have v by 3 rest everything is same so instead of like if you want you can go ahead and solve the whole integration but i am not going to do that i am just skipping that part just same step by step but uh, if you put v by 3 you will get i2 the value of i2 will come up v upon 6 and if you just want to understand how it came so the only difference between these two in these two integration parts was that the value of v over here was v and here it was v by 3 okay so the only difference is 1 by 3 times of this okay and rest everything is same so the final answer should also be 1 by 3 times more than this which will be v by 6 okay if you multiply with 1 by 3 it becomes v by 6 so i'm keeping this part but you can if you are going to challenge this you have to again solve that for the second integration same step by step everything is going to remain same the only thing will be that instead of taking v by l outside you will have v by 3 l outside okay v by 3 l will be outside and at the end l and l will cancel out here you will have v by 3 and l by 2 l and l will get cancelled out so like you will have v upon 6 now if you substitute both of these values so your total energy sorry total uh, first order energy correction should come up v upon um, 2 and plus v upon 2 and plus v upon 6 uh, certainly the lcm for this should be 6 this is going to be 3v plus v and which should give you 4v by 6 which is nothing but um, like this is going to give you 2v by 3 so this is the right answer okay the correct answer should be option number 2 
and this is challengeable question okay you can you have solved this question if you have attempted this question it's highly recommend that you challenge this question if you have answered option number 2 you will certainly get marks okay so yeah that's it from my side for this particular video and uh, i hope that these things make sense and might help you to decide to ch which challenge which questions and which not so that's it from my side for this particular video i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care